Good morning. Well, thanks to everybody that was here Friday night for the not-so-newlywed game. I'll let you know that uh, Leah and Austin are about ready to start their uh, marriage counseling um, services. So congratulations to the winners. That was a lot of fun. A uh, few other announcements. Uh, first of all, uh, vacation slash writing time was fun. It was a good mix of, of work with relaxation. I will tell you that in February, the Atlantic Ocean water is still cold, um, but the sunshine was great. We had a great time, so, but missed everyone. Uh, we're getting ready to start. Uh, this Lent kicks off this week, so we're getting ready to start our series, our Lenten series on if these stones could talk. So we're gonna, we're gonna spend some time throughout the season of Lent looking at the different ways that stones are used um, in scripture. One of the things that we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna have um, rocks or stones at the entrance to the sanctuary. So when you come in, and you can either do it before or after service. I'm gonna have a wheelbarrow here. So you bring your rock or your stone in and they represent our sins, our sin life. And we're just going to drop those into the wheelbarrow every week, every week when you come in. Now, some, some weeks you may be able to get by with just dropping a pebble in, and sometimes you're going to want to grab a boulder or maybe a handful and bring them forward. But that's all okay, all right? Don't worry about it. Um, and, and then we're going we're gonna to do this throughout the season of Lent, and then um, you're really, really going to like Easter Sunday. Uh, Jerry, I don't know what you're doing, but they, um, they actually have a line in here. We love the fellowship that we have forged with Jerry at the food pantry. So um, I don't know, Jerry. Um, you guys are so faithful. I think uh, 35 to 45 families, um, every time that we make a drop-off, get the benefit of, of your donations and that, I think that is such a great ministry. So thank you for your faithfulness in that. And Jerry, thanks for representing us so well in, in your labors and doing that. I really appreciate it. Tuesday, 6 p.m., we're having a trustee meeting, and everyone is invited. This is not anything that is, if you're not a trustee, you can't come. All of our meetings are open unless there's a personnel issue that we're we're talking about, but none of that's been going on. It's, they've all been all great meetings. If you have questions, if you wanna learn more about what's going on uh, to the assets, to the facility, um, look forward to meeting you there. Uh, Wednesday, Ash Wednesday service is at 6.30, and we are gonna have Sunday school next week, 9.45, we're gonna be in the conference room, and if you come in late, don't worry about it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start right on time so that we can get done in time. But don't worry about it. If you're looking at it and say, I'm gonna be five minutes late, come on in. Um, any other announcements? Cliff, can you think of anything? Jeff? Yeah, there's a little bit. It's not as bad as it was yesterday though, right Debbie? Yesterday was a really strong tar smell, so, and they are working today, but we're, we're gonna get through this and the smell will dissipate. Um, but uh, that's the good news. We have a new roof going on. Jeff, anything? Debbie? All right. I invite you to stand for our call to worship, please. The call to worship comes to us from Psalm 146. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praises to the Lord as long as I live. Blessed is the one whose help is in the God of Jacob, maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. The Lord remains faithful. The Lord upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives to those in need. The Lord sets the prisoners free, gives sight to the blind, lifts the weak, and loves the righteous. He watches over the widow and the foreigner, he frustrates the wicked. God reigns forever. Amen. Please let's sing, I surrender all.
we head into a, a time of prayer, one of the things I want to share with you is when you look at the calls to worship that are typically from Psalms or Proverbs or other scripture, a lot of times if you look at the where it says call to worship, it'll say from Psalm whatever it is. And it's especially that way going forward uh, from this point on. I've taken the liberty um, I keep them, the meaning there, but what I try to do is make them more prayerful for our time. So if you're, if you're looking, if you go to Psalm 146 and you say, well, that does, that's not what that says. I, I, yeah, you're right. It, it doesn't always follow that way. I'm not changing the meaning, but I'm making it more uh, prayerful or to fit our application more, um, but not changing it. It's not the Bible according to Dave at all. That's or sometimes I'll use hymns and I'll rearrange the, the stanzas a little bit. But if you want to know why they don't match up, that's the reason. Uh, also, uh, one of my prayer requests going forward is to pray for me. I've got a surgery coming up March 13th. Stick around if you can for just two minutes. I promise no longer than two minutes after service if you're interested. And I'll tell you what's going on and how it's going to affect our scheduling and preaching schedule and that. Um, but I'm anxious to hear what your prayer requests are, both pra praises and concerns this morning. Mike? I'm recuperating from back surgery. And one for my daughter's on vacation for her safety. And one for my sister-in-law. She had knee surgery and she has a blood clot in her leg at this time. And they're trying to figure out what to do with that. They gave her medication. And her what's her name? name? Marty. Marty. So Marty's got a blood clot from knee <laughs> surgery. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to say it, but I didn't think it's uh, God got it. We're going to pray for her. Okay. Others? Uh, Margaret and then Jeff. Pray for my husband, Bob. He just, um, you know, there's just a lot going on. Winter's not been kind to us okay. um, health-wise and stuff. And, don't we'll, think we're not. Don't think he's not coming back. No, no, no. He is. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep on with it in prayer. Thank Thank you. You. Uh, our nephew Jordan is taking his final test for his teaching license for the state of Ohio sometime this week coming up. So. Okay, we'll keep Jordan lifted in prayer. Oh, oh well, yeah, and our daughter Jennifer. I mentioned this. Her name's Kristen Henry. She's waiting for double lung transplant. Ooh, okay. Christian double lung transplant. And I'm sorry, what? And that's oh, okay, that's all the ends. <laughs> okay. And Jerry, did you have Yeah, Andy's on the prayer list. He's now gonna be able to three to twelve months uh for the the prostate cancer okay. uh treatable. Yeah. Another friend, Dave. We got some kids.
Elizabeth, you doing okay? All right. Okay, great. We're keeping you prayed up. Good to see you this morning. Let's go to God in prayer. Lord, we thank you for the blessing of being able to come into your house and worship. We, we look at all the work being done here, and we are just simply blown away that, um, I, I don't know, for me it's an exciting time to look, look around and see the work that's being done. And I look at the people here, and you know, we have bad knees and shoulders and backs, and we're fighting illness, and sometimes surgery can help us, or medicine, but not always. Then we look at our spiritual life, and we can question, is that healthy? Do I need some work done in my spiritual life? And I don't think there's one person here who doesn't need a new roof or some plumbing or heating or something in their spiritual life. We all have something that we need to have removed. We need to have it demoed and taken out. Other times we need a we need a refresher. We need a, a renovation. And Lord, would you do that work within us? Would you help us? We ask that you would renew our souls, Lord. As we think on that this morning, Lord, hear us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I would invite you to stand for our doxology, please. we do indeed praise God from whom all blessings flow. We know that everything that we have, everything that we are, comes from you. Lord, we ask that you would accept our gifts of tithe and offering, that you would anoint them, that you would accept them as a token of our love, but that you would use them for your purpose. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. So this is our last Sunday of Star Trek. Well, I didn't hear any cheering, so I don't know. <laughs> I didn't hear any groaning, though, either, so I don't know what that means. But I think of my favorite time in school, the end of the day. <laughs> you know, even more than recess, I just wanted it over. I, what it, <clears throat> when we do this, when we, we go through fun series, like we're going to do Winnie the Pooh and we're going to do a little bit about Pokemon, which I know nothing about, uh, in Star Trek. You know, those are all fun. They're, they're interesting. They're still all scriptural. We still do talk about Jesus Christ and what a difference he makes in our life. But I want to have fun with it. I want church to be an exciting place, a fun place where people want to come, not not when they get up Sunday morning, they say, oh gosh, got to go to church today. I want it to be fun and exciting. But there comes a time when recess is over. 
there's a time when we have to say it's time to get serious. So that's why mixed in with the fun things are some serious ones. We're going to spend the, the season of Lent picking up a handful of stones some days. Maybe some days, you know, our, it's been a great week and we only need to pick up a pebble because um, I, I have a friend who says, well, ever since COVID, I haven't been outside, so I haven't offended anybody. You know, he looks at it as a, as a good thing, so maybe he just has a pebble one week. But if you're like me, there are some weeks that are good, and there are some weeks that are just darn right. You, you got up on the wrong side of the bed every single day, and you need to bring up, maybe you need to bring up a wheelbarrow full, full of rock. You know, we're here for that, but it's time to get serious on some of our messaging, so we mix it in. And it's like it, it, when you're at school, there's the recess part of the day, but then there's a time when recess is over and it's time to go back inside. It's time to do some learning. So that's what we're, that's, we're transitioning. So this is the last day for now that I get to wear the, the uniform. I'm losing my stripes. I gotta turn in my communicator back to Cliff and all that kind of stuff. But um, I want you to think about this. When you come back, if you're able to, I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday when we, we celebrate Ash Wednesday in this, this season of Lent. We kick this off. What that looks like and what in your life maybe do you need to say, okay, God, I've been fun on recess, but I need to get serious about my faith. I need to, I need to knuckle down. I need to spend time in my lesson you know the book the bible i need to do that not that i'm going to spend hours every day studying although that wouldn't be bad but i am going to try to pay attention and learn a little bit more about why you lived the way you do why do you love the way you love and then turn that into how we can do that so let's have a prayer as we think about that Lord, I thank you for the, the fun things you give us. You give us uh, recess in school. You give us vacations from our labors. You give us nighttime where we can sleep and, and rest our weary bodies from our labors of the day. You give us dessert that we can have at dinner time. But Lord, sometimes we need to put away the sugary sweets. We need to sit down and, and have our vegetables and sometimes we don't always like doing that. So, Lord, we ask that you would be with us and help us get serious about our faith. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to spend uh, uh, some time in Ephesians this morning. Please pray with me. Dear God, we hang on to precious moments with family and friends. May we also cling to time with you, engaged and committed to what pleases you. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts please you. Amen. Before I get into the message, let's, let's do some music here. Let's sing. And this is not... Okay, we're going to sing. No, we've got, we've been praying for two and a half years to have someone lead us in music, and we have answered prayer, so you're not singing to each other, and you're not singing to me, definitely. We're singing our praises to God. So uh, Lexi's going to lead us in step by step.
we were created for a time and a purpose. Unfortunately, we and all society, from the very first person to today, have drifted. We've broken away from God's plan and purpose for our lives. Now, we are in Christ Jesus, and we've, brought into his, we've been brought into his fellowship. Now that we are recreated for his purpose, call, and pleasure, and purpose, shouldn't we be following his lead? If we're in fellowship with him, shouldn't we be following his lead? These are precious days that we've been given. When we look at eternity, we are microscopic. Our lives could fit thousands of them on the, on the head of a pin. Our days are precious and not to be wasted. We have all lost loved ones. Everyone here has lost loved ones. What if the day that they were going to pass away was known to us a year in advance? Would we have crammed more of life into that year? Would we have done something different? We don't get do-overs in that respect. Engage. Picard used it as a command to proceed. Maybe you've heard these versions. Gentlemen, start your engines. How about runners to the line? Visions come up, don't they? You know what they refer to. Whatever you use to get it in gear, that's what Christ is expecting from us. He wants us to get it in gear. To attain the fullness of Christ, we need to engage. Christians weren't meant to sit in pews on their hands not doing. That's not Christian. That's, that's worship, but we need to be going. We need, about, need to be doing. There's a world that needs to hear the word of God and experience the word of God through us. This time, today, this moment. Picard also said, make it so. It's similar to engage, but it, it's more of a commitment. It's like, okay, we're taking engage, and now we're taking that first step forward. Make it so. Do it. It's an exclamation point. The question before us today is this. Are we committed to squeezing today for all we can and committed to the mission to which we're engaged. I love history. I like reading about men and women who've gone before who were just a bit different. Uh, on June 6th, 1944, we know it as D-Day, Sergeant Summers, on your screen, was given a direct order to take his 15 men. Pay attention to this. 15 men and capture a farmhouse where the enemy was keeping them pinned down on the beach. They couldn't advance off of the beach because of this farmhouse of the enemy. He was told to not stop and not come back until he was instructed otherwise. Because he had not been relieved, he went on and he took several more farmhouses after that original, and he captured 60 enemy soldiers, and he did it by himself. Not one person joined him. His 15 men refused. He did it by himself. You see, our moments can be precious. We need to be engaged we need to make it so. Ephesians 2, 11 through 13. 
Therefore, remember that formerly you who were Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. Jean-Luc Picard said, live now, make the moment of the, this precious time because now will never come again. For any who think that the story of Sergeant Summers is a, a bit melodramatic, considering that we're safe here in this environment, we have our security guard Mike out there guarding the doors and protecting us. We're in the sanctity of this church. I would tell you that all you need to do is look at any headline in any newspaper or on any news broadcast and try to convince yourself that we're not at war with evil. Because we are. We've been given a, a precious amount of time to complete a mission, though, and the question is, will we? For all of his efforts in heroism, Summers received a battlefield commission and a distinguished service cross. And then, true to form, the government lost his commendation for a Medal of Honor. You know, the thing of it is, we may never be noticed for what we do on earth. We may never receive a commendation but I assure you that all is recorded in heaven and noticed by God. We were once without hope, but because of the blood of Christ, we are brought into a close relationship with him. We have the good fortune, we have the blessing, the privilege of having not a, not a, a relationship as a church family with Christ, although we do, but we have the privilege of having a personal relationship with Christ. But time is fleeting. Time is precious to us. You know, there are days when we drift away from God's best for us. But then there's a time when we run back into his arms. You know what that feeling's like. Think of a time when your, your kids or your grandkids or your favorite nieces and nephews come to visit and then they leave and now there's that immediate relaxation say they've been with you for three days you are exhausted and then it seems like moments later you're ready for them to come back I want to see them again I miss them you love that It's the way it is with God. We spend time with him and we, we leave. We drift away from God. And he can't wait till we come back. He wants us there with him. The difference is God doesn't look for that break, for that relaxation time. But he is so excited when we come back. Imagine how long that God has waited for some of us. I mean, some of us were brought up in the church. We've never really, I mean, we drift away a little bit through our sin life. But think about people who may have never heard the name Jesus Christ, who have never known a fellowship with him, who are counting on us to maybe make that introduction. Remember, our mission is not to make Christians. Our mission is not to succeed in bringing people into the church. Our mission is to make the introduction. It's the Holy Spirit's job to bring them into the family of Christ. But wouldn't it be cool if we were the one that got to make that introduction or maybe we're the one that got to reinforce the introduction? Wouldn't it be great to be part of that
if you are close friends with Tom Hanks or um, Malala Yousafzai, maybe Joe Burrow was your next door neighbor and you were good friends or Angelina Jolie or, or maybe George Clooney, wouldn't you want to introduce your friends to them? You have Jesus Christ who made them. You can introduce your friend to Jesus. Time is precious. Maybe not for us, but maybe if, if we looked at, hey, I'm going to introduce my friend to Christ tomorrow. What if they get hit by a bus tonight? Time is precious. We never know what any of us have. What might we be able to accomplish in the name of Christ in the precious moments that he's given to us and to them? Because God says, it's like Nike, just do it. Ephesians 4, 9 through 13. When he ascended on high, he led captives in his train and gave gifts to men. What does he ascended mean, except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all of the heavens, in order to fill the whole universe. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers, to prepare God's people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God, and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Picard said engage, and he, when he, he says engage, he's, he's pointing forward. It's do it. It's, it's not engage. No, in, in other words, it, he is. He's just do it. Let's do this. He's saying, Christ is saying, do as I have done. Do as I've commanded. Do as I've called and equipped you and trained you and prepared you. Remember that God loves us. He loves us just as messed up and as goofy as we are. But he loves us too much to leave us there. He's working towards our perfection. He expects us to be perfected in him, following his example for his best living for us. He says... Engage. It's a command to begin. I believe that some of us, if we could live to be over a thousand years old, and you came back in, in here a thousand years from now, would still be sitting comfortable. It's not what we were created for. Summers didn't capture the first farmhouse and stop. kept going. He was told to continue until relieved. And that's what he did, and that's what we should be doing. I question why soldiers are better at following the earthly command of someone they don't know who does not have their best wishes in mind or best um, results in mind But yet we as Christians who follow a person who does have our best in mind, we don't follow him. That makes no kind of sense to me whatsoever. And I'm guilty of doing that. So the flag has dropped. The starting pistol has been fired. We don't need to start the engines. They're running. That command's already been given. That's been taken care of. But there's a little pedal on the right hand. You know, when that person is stopped at the traffic light in front of you and the light turns green and their car's running and they're sitting there, it's the pedal on the right. I just want to flash a sign at them. You can go now. I think sometimes God gets frustrated. I know he does with me. Dave, you asked for a sign, I gave you a sign. You asked for training, I gave you training. You wanted to be equipped. You wanted to be prepared. 
I've got all that done for you. David's the accelerator on the right. Imagine that we work in a restaurant. The tables are all filled. Everybody's got their menu. They've made their selection. And you and the other waiters are in the back room having a little break. If I don't know. In the old days, I'd say you could sit down and have a cigarette, but you can't do that anymore. But you're just sitting there relaxing. The owner of the restaurant comes in. Is he happy? No. He said, folks, there are people waiting to place orders. Get busy. Be doing. God gave some to be apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And then underline this to prepare God's people for works of service. Now, I want you to know that this is not an all-inclusive list. So you're saying, well, I'm not an apostle, I'm not a prophet, I'm not an evangelist, I'm not a pastor, I'm not a teacher, so I don't have to do any of that. No. We all need to be preparing God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity and faith in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. You see, we are the fullness of Christ, but when one is missing, we're not full. And look around. I I won't say look around at the the pew that's empty. What I'm going to say is look outside at the people that aren't in any church. There's plenty of room. I'm not about numbers. Yes, I want to see us grow, but I want to see people come to Christ. That's my number one mission. I didn't see anywhere where God calls some to be pew sitters on break or on standby. We're to be engaged, and at the very least, we are to be doing works of service, building unity, maturing, and attaining the fullness of Christ. That's an activity. It's not a passive observation. Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self, created to be like God, in true righteousness and holiness. And Picard said, make it so. So this, you know, I have to ask the question, are we committed to squeezing everything we can out of every day. And I, and I don't mean I want to get the most out of recess. You know, it's, there's more to life than recess. Are we committed to the mission? How committed are we to the mission that God has called us? Now, I do need to be clear. I, I don't want you to think that I'm sitting up here with a tally sheet and saying, well, you didn't, you didn't bring anyone to Christ. Or I, I failed today because I didn't bring anyone to Christ. You see, we're not called to, to succeed. We're not called to win. We're called, we're called to do. We're called to be going about God's business. God is the one that wins. If we, if we are instrumental in I mean, we may never know that someone has has come to Christ or not, but uh, some of you have been teachers. But so, if if you were a teacher, and and you said something, or or you're a grandparent and you've said something to one of your grandkids about Christ, uh, the reason I use teacher is because you may never know if if that child ever came to Christ or not. If they're your grandchild, you would probably know. Um, but if you, you don't know that they ever came to Christ, but you, you played some part of that, God wins. You're instrumental in that. You're part of that process. Understand, though, uh, I, I think back to Queen Esther, uh, who was born for such a time as this. If you don't, do your part, then God has to find someone else that will communicate with that person, that will make that introduction, that will fertilize or water or or give the sunshine. 
are we committed to answer the call, to try to do, to, to run the race? Paul talks a lot about running the race. Paul doesn't talk about winning as much as he does running. Scripture tells us that the victory is God's. Now, most of you will know part of this story, but I, 1995, Chris Spielman played middle linebacker for the Buffalo Bills. He played the entire season with a torn pectoral muscle. A very painful tear. He was committed to his team and the task before him. He never missed. But in 1998, as Stephanie's wife was dealing with breast cancer, he never played a down of football. He gave up his career to stay home and take care of her and their children. She was in a constant battle with uh, nausea and chemo and pain. Chris was by her side that whole time. He left his entire career behind to care for her. Now, granted, he had had years of success to be able to do that. Not all of us have that luxury, but... He was committed. I wonder, are, are we committed to do all that we can? He cleaned, he cooked, he cared for the children, he cared for his wife. See, he was totally committed. And whether or not he won or they won is, is open to anyone else's perspective. Chris never played another down of football. But he ran the race that was set before him. And I believe that Stephanie has won. I believe that Stephanie is in the church triumphant today. But the family didn't stop when Stephanie passed away. They built the internationally renowned, renowned Stephanie Spielman Comprehensive Breast Center. They offer unparalleled expertise and resources assessing the needs of the whole person, including family. See, that's total commitment. Spielman threw off the old life to face a new life. Are we fully committed to throwing off our old life to face the new life that we have in, in Christ? Are we willing to engage and make it so? What if it means throwing off comfy for a bit? For just a bit? Will we? Will we leave our comfort zones for Christ? Not for me, not for anybody else, but for Christ. Listen again. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put your old self off which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Sergeant Summers ran forward because he hadn't been instructed to stop. Chris Spielman didn't stop when he lost his wife. He doubled down on his commitment. He remains remained then and remains today committed to his family, but he also began building a legacy to his wife, to the family, their memory. Are we committed to making it so in creating a legacy in the name of Jesus Christ? This is our final installment of Star Trek. As I said when we started, not Star Trek, not any TV show, not anything you read here takes the place of the Bible and the teachings that we get from Jesus Christ. I did find it interesting that they would sit down on set when they were filming and they would have discussions about Creator and about God. Now, Roddenberry was insistent that religion would not be introduced in any show. But I found it interesting that they would, even on set, have discussions about Christianity and Creator. 
I am in no way a combat veteran. I've never served in any branch of the service. I don't have any medals. I don't have any awards for service. And I don't mean to demean or take for granted anyone who serves or has served in any position. I look up to people like Harrison Summers and the other men and women who serve today. They were in a, a different battle. Our battle is different than theirs. The rulers against uh, we battle, our battle is against the rulers, against the authorities and powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. We've been given precious time to engage and commit to making it so. I used the analogy of being restaurant workers, waiting to start. Jesus said it this way. He said, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Amen. I'm going to tell you a little bit about <clears throat> William Tyndall. That name might be familiar with many of you. William, uh, you might see it today in books, Tyndale Publishing. William Tyndale died in 1536 at 42 years of age. But what he accomplished in his few precious years is amazing and something that we in this church today owe a lot of thanks to Tyndale. Uh, he was of the belief and he was committed that the people owned the Bible, that the people should be able to read the word of God. And he translated it and distributed it to the common people. His trans translation serves as the model for the, the King James Version of the Bible that came later. Many of our modern translations follow the guideline, the translation that Tyndale offered. For his efforts, Tyndale was rewarded with being strangled and then burned at the stake. So today I invite you to stand and to profess your faith and to let God hear you as you affirm the, the same faith that William Tyndall had. Please stand. There is one God and there is one mediator, Christ Jesus, who came as a ransom for all to whom we testify. This saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners and was manifested in the flesh, vindicated in the spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed in throughout the world, taken up in glory. Great indeed is the mystery of the gospel. Amen. Please remain standing as Lexi leads us in what a friend we have in Jesus. And, and we really do have a friend in Jesus. Think about this as we sing.
military recruiters went to a high school for an assembly and they were each given 15 minutes. So Army, Navy, and Marines. They each had 15 minutes, but the Army guy took 20 minutes and the Navy guy took 20 minutes, which left the Marine recruiter with five. And the Navy recruiter stood ramrod straight when it was his turn. And he didn't speak for four minutes and 45 seconds. He just stood there. And in his last 15 seconds, he said, I know that most of you don't have what it takes to be a Marine, but if anyone's interested, I'll be in the cafeteria. And he turned around and left. You know where everybody went? They all went to the Marine Corps recruiter. That's what God's calling us to today. But he's not saying, I know you don't have what it takes. He's saying, I know you've got what it takes because I've given it to you. You have what it takes to be my follower. And instead of I'll see you in the cafeteria, he said, I'll see you out there that's where he is that's where he's calling you he's not calling you to church he's calling you to the world engage amen